You walk through Pinion Juniper Forest at the rim of a canyon, and it's a friendly place once you get over the stunning space and silence and the mountains that are out there on the horizon at 100 miles away. And then all of a sudden you do start to see life. You see lizards skittering off under a rock. You hear a flock of pinion jays collecting nuts out of those pinion groves. And a raven flies by. And then with a little luck, a canyon wren, the, the glissade of a canyon wren's call, the sort of theme song of the, the canyon country, a musical waterfall that brings you up short and you just stop and listen. The sculptural forms of slick rock just the texture, the light, the combination of stone and sky and twisted juniper with an occasional river running through. It's just a landscape that speaks to me. Wilderness helps people remember their humanity and their sense of who they are, a planet that they're floating on in the middle of the universe under the stars. I think the ability to hear yourself in the wilderness is something special that you don't get anywhere else where if it's not your own thoughts, your own breathing, it's the environment around you. There's a strong sense of uh, stewardship that I feel a lot of Latinx people have about our environment, whether they're in the urban environment or whether they spend time in public lands. It's something that unites all of us. The wildland wilderness is very important to the Navajo people because it represents who they are, their way of life, their education, and their language, and their direct connection to sacred sites, the canyons, the valleys, the mountains. That's all a part of their religion when they say Ina that's what embodies the entire wilderness concept. There are lots and lots of animals, deers, bears, snakes, spiders. They are the brothers and sisters of mankind. And we speak for them and in a lot of ways they take care of the land. Mother Earth every day. I keep saying the word extraordinary because it's hard to describe this landscape if you haven't seen it, but there's nothing else like it on planet Earth. Utah's ground zero for the fight around public lands and what does it mean to have public lands and, and what does that mean for our communities and our nation. We're lucky in Utah that we have huge landscapes that we can go in and find solitude. Our public lands here in Utah, if you're from New York City, they're yours. If you're from Boston, they're yours. If you're from Los Angeles, they're yours. If you're from Nephi, Utah, they're yours. And that's the great thing about wilderness and the great thing about public lands. Utah has been a battleground over the last 35 years, mostly because the politicians that represent this state fail to actually represent the views of the people that live here, and their views are more akin to the oil and gas industry and the mining companies that make heavy contributions to their campaigns. This land is constantly under threat, and without united citizen action, it will be lost. Some of the most serious threats for land proposes wilderness right now are oil and gas leasing, mining, off-road vehicle usage, basically any human impact that has the potential to destroy the ecosystem. Fossil fuel development on Utah's wilderness lands also damages our planetary health by accelerating the devastating impacts of climate change. Elected officials in the state of Utah are also seeking to limit the lands available for wilderness designation by claiming that thousands of unused dirt tracks and Jeep trails are actually state highways under an obscure law known as RS-2477 from the 1860s. The state of Utah is trying to seize public lands in Utah from the American people, demanding that America's public lands be turned over to state ownership and control. 
These short-sighted policies place short-term profits over our long-term responsibility to protect our most cherished places, the last places we should sacrifice. Their main objective is energy development, and I think it goes further than that. Most of our county commissioners are states' rights activists, and they are in favor of removing any federal government control, and they want the state and the county to control all the policies and all the laws pertaining to mineral extraction. In addition to facing so many threats from climate change, we're also a region that's contributing to climate change because a lot of public lands are being set aside for energy development. If we want to think about climate change seriously, I think it also pushes us to rethink how we manage public lands and think about how we can protect more places rather than prioritize them for fossil fuel extraction. Coming home from Iraq, it took me a couple years to find my way outside. And when I found my way outside and onto our public lands, things started to click for me in a way that they hadn't before, both from a sense of healing, as well as recognizing what, at least nominally, I fought for. There's got to be some places where they're left long, be freed from industrial energy development. And Bears Ears region is one of the last remaining pristine wilderness area that must be protected. In order to protect these lands, citizens of Utah formulated America's Red Rock Wilderness Act. This legislation, which is currently before Congress, would protect over 9 million acres of public land in Utah. It would protect the wildlife, water, and air. It would also preserve the remains of Native American cultures that have been here for thousands of years. America's Red Rock Wilderness Act would prevent oil and gas drilling, mining, and off-road vehicles from causing irreparable damage to these lands. It would also ensure that these public lands remain in public ownership, available for all of us to hike, camp, hunt, fish, or simply spend time with family and friends in wild nature. The public lands in Utah aren't just Utahns public lands. They belong to everyone. They belong to all Americans. In the last 30 years, Utah politicians have time and time again tried to pass legislation through Congress that would open these lands to development. And time and time again, citizens from Utah banded together with Americans across the country to stop them. And so the important thing is that you have to have a mass movement with people across the country to build the political strength to stand up to the politicians of Utah. I think first and foremost, everybody needs to know that these are their lands. And whatever happens to them, they should always have a stake in what it is. Doesn't make a difference where you live or where you come from. These are public lands. They belong to the citizens of the United States. Citizen action is crucial to the future of Utah's public lands, partly because Unfortunately, our Utah delegation has not stepped up to their responsibility to protect this land. Decision makers respond to public pressure, and we have to show up. No matter who the person is that we've elected to office, we have to show up and tell them what we think. So it's up to us to educate them. I encourage everyone I talk to to write letters to the editor. Elected officials read those, they pay attention to them, they keep track of how many support one position and how many support another. The young generation is bringing in these new ideas of how we think about wild places and showing that we need these for our spiritual sustenance and that we love these wild places. And there's kind of the stereotype that public lands are like the old white gray hairs go. And so I think it's powerful to bring in these diverse voices. And I think that's where the real leadership will lie because it not only shows how many people value these spaces, but also brings in new ways of thinking about how we can protect them in the long term. Young people can make a difference in the future of Utah's wildlands because the voice that young people give to wild places in Utah, the agency that they give to wild places by speaking for them, is really what's going to lead to protective designations in unprotected wild spaces in Utah. Having a restaurant here on the edge of wilderness, I'm in contact every year with thousands of people who have just 
come out of public lands. And what I hear again and again from them is that wilderness fixes something in them. They long for it, they need it, and then to have the experience of being in it and not to be surrounded by other people, they get to fix something in their hearts. And so it's incredibly important that everyone, all of us who care about wild places, that we get involved, that we speak up for what we love. We just came out of the canyon and it reminded me of what they say in Mexico when a baby's born, dar la luz, to give to the light. And that's what it felt like coming out of that slot. I came into the light. It is very important for people from all walks of life to come together and stand up and say enough is enough. This is our home and if we don't say no, if we don't speak out, we're going to destroy our home. We are so, so lucky to live on this earth, Mother Earth. We have the beautiful landscapes, the sky, the sunlight, and we have young children, many, many generations to come. And we cannot afford to just stand by and allow people to destroy our environment. That's the reason why we should all stand together. There is no distinction of nationality. We're all the children of Mother Earth, and we must protect her. Thank you.